So welcome to our Live on ServiceNow webinar, Introducing Retail Service Management and Retail Operations. My name is Anita. Uh, we'll do our brief introductions in just a moment, and I'll let Rahul also introduce himself at the beginning of his section. But before we get too far, it uh, wouldn't be a webinar without our safe harbor notice for forward-looking statements. So just as a heads up, um, this is going to potentially contain some forward-looking statements, and you should not make purchasing decisions off of those. But we'll be focusing on the Xanadu release today. Another note, um, this is a live on ServiceNow webinar and it is part of a larger series. So if you're a part of our broader ServiceNow community, um, you can go ahead and use these live on ServiceNow webinars to learn more um, all throughout your customer journey. You can see the schedule on this page and you can also go through the community page to find additional events like this one. So join us for future webinars and 360 exchanges. And just a little bit of housekeeping um, before we get into the content. We did reserve time at the end of this webinar for Q&A. You can use the Q&A button specifically at the bottom of the Zoom webinar to go ahead and ask questions along the way. Um, we'll try to handle some of those during the webinar or we'll address them at the end of our time together. This is a very common question, this next one. Um, this presentation is being recorded and it will be shared on our ServiceNow community page. Um, that will be a link to the recording as well as a presentation. So if there's anything that you're seeing today that is really important to you, um, you will be able to access this later. And after the event ends, you will be prompted to fill out a short survey. So please do um, help us out with some feedback. Thanks in advance. All right, so again, thank you for joining us today. My name is Anita Chang. I'm a Senior Outbound Product Manager for our retail products, um, and I'll let Rahul introduce himself. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rahul. Uh, I'm part of the Inbound Product Management team at ServiceNow looking at retail product. So looking forward for this webinar today. Awesome. And Rahul and I will be delivering this webinar for you today. We'll start out with an introduction to our retail products. They are new. Um, so we'll be going through what those are and their key capabilities. And then I'll hand it off to Rahul for the live demo. And then as promised, we will have the Q&A section. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So why are we here today? What are we talking about in this giant landscape of retail? Well, first of all, what brings us all together is that our retail customers, so again, those end customers of retailers, want great in-store experiences, and they need those to be delivered quickly and efficiently. I know a lot of us have probably heard about the rise of e-commerce, but a huge amount of the transactions that are happening for our retailers are still happening in stores. And so those experiences and beyond are going to be really important to shaping that experience for retail in general. So in-store experience, big part of it, and being able to connect all the different elements for our retailers is crucial. Now, one thing to note is that obviously ServiceNow has had uh, a lot of retail customers. We're not new to this industry. Um, so when we started out looking at the specific challenges that were relevant to retail, we had a lot of people to ask. Um, and what we heard from them is that really there were a lot of shared challenges in the retail store side of the house. Um, and I should say that when I'm talking about stores, I'm also um, including in there things like quick service restaurants, convenience stores, um, and even to a, great, a degree hotels um, and other forms of hospitality, these physical locations where we're delivering service to our customers. So when we talked to our retailers, what we heard is that the streamlining of operations was a difficulty, right? There was no end-to-end -end visibility. At HQ, you know, we often have these processes that bring everyone together in a shared platform, but the store was often left out. And because they were left out of those processes, they, they had to devise their own. You know, there are a lot of manual tools. Um, we've been to uh, stores where people are writing things down still on pen and paper. And at the end of the day, um, th those papers just end up nowhere really in the trash and it's not completing the entire process from HQ down to the store. 
And because all these stores were having to kind of create their own systems, um, there's a lot of silos and disjointedness that made it impossible for us to really have that end-to-end -end operational flow that we love to see when it comes to smooth operations, efficiency, um, and really timely, at the end of the day, customer and store support. What this was really bringing for our stores is lower sales since you have people who are spending their time and combating the effects of this inefficiency, frustrated employees and unhappy customers, the ones that were really there to provide an experience for and deliver that brand awareness. So with ServiceNow, what we are now delivering are unified retail solutions that complement all the rest of our platform by allowing us to support the store and support our customers. And when I talk about store support, that's things like operational support, if something is broken and they need help, all the way to being able to assign things to the store um, so that task management can also be handled in one place. And on the customer care side, this is something that ServiceNow has a lot of experience with. Um, we have a great customer service management platform that allows us to resolve customer issues no matter which channel it's coming from. And the two of these together really allow us to address some of those challenges for retailers, whether that is going to um, lower our maintenance and repair costs, addressing equipment downtime, or just addressing what is important to our customers um, by getting our employees out onto the floor instead of spending their time on hold on a phone call, waiting for help from HQ, and all of this coming together to deliver higher customer satisfaction. Now, when I talk about our solutions today and what you're going to see from Rahul in the live demo, the important context here is that our industry workflows are built on top of our customer workflows. So what does that mean? Um, so here we're sitting on the top level here in our retail industry. Um, and as we continue to deliver innovation and content, we are going to be able to take advantage of the great foundation that has been put together through our customer service management uh, tools, our field service management tools, that foundation at the bottom here that builds on top of our now platform brings us all of these capabilities that we can then tailor and leverage for you, our retail customers, to be able to have the most relevant experience for your industry. So we are drawing upon um, the wealth of knowledge that has already been built in our CIWF foundation. And as we are launching these products, our retail service management and retail operations product new in the Xanadu release, we are bringing a lot of this experience with us. So let me tell you about these specific products, starting with retail service management. So what does retail service management do? RSM, as I'm going to refer to it from now on to save a little bit of time, is the retail industry version of customer service management. And so if you're familiar with CSM, a lot of these values will, um, will be familiar to you. So RSM allows us to empower the agents that are serving both stores and customers directly with intelligent guidance and workspaces. So the tools that they need to do their jobs, all the while bringing together the entire retail organization through automated processes. And this is really in service of our customer. So this allows us to deliver that seamless customer experience in store or beyond. So that's retail service management. Now, the other side of that coin is retail operations or retail ops. And so this is an add-on to retail service management. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to bring our stores or any type of location, um, the owned or franchised versions, depending on the ownership model for your particular company, and puts that into our unique data model with the store teams, with equipment, and more so that we can bring this all into one system, one single ServiceNow platform with site-based pricing for our store teams to be able to access our platform. And that allows us to have everyone in the system for tasking and visibility that goes across the organization instead of being isolated at just HQ um, or just 
uh, point solution at the store. So together with retail service management and retail operations, what we're really focusing on is unifying the retail organization. So again, to reiterate, the retail service management is really for the headquarters where we are supporting customers in the stores. Um, and so that is a traditional kind of fulfiller-based model, if you're familiar with that, um, with your current ServiceNow products. And so on the HQ side, RSM. And on the store side, we have our retail operations product that is specifically for these teams um, that allows us to go ahead and be a part of the same platform. All right. And so what we're really doing by putting everyone into this retail industry product is to go ahead and unify the retail organization to serve the customer. And so whether a customer is reaching out to HQ through central service um, teams or reaching out through the store, being in person, having question, at the end of the day, the goal is really to deliver cust customer experiences consistently through every channel, including in the store. So those are our two products. They've, they're generally available through uh, the Xanadu release, which was launched last month. Um, so now we have RSM and RO together serving the customer. Now, let me walk you through some of the key capabilities of these products. How do we accomplish this? So here, I'm gonna talk about some of the capabilities that are in RSM and RO and who they serve. So first off, who is this product for? Who is going to be using this? We touched on this a little bit in the last section, um, but for retail operations, we have our store associates um, who can be more empowered to focus on the tasks that are coming to them operationally, whether it's something that happens in the store that they need to address, you know, a broken freezer, something that needs to be uh, handled by reaching out to HQ directly, or a task that comes to them from HQ, a product needs to be returned to the warehouse, for example. Giving our store associates all the information they need in one place is really critical. And this gives them the ability to be more empowered as they move through their workday. Then we have our store leadership teams. One thing that's important about our retail products is that we have a central retail data model that allows us to model stores throughout our hierarchy and roll up that visibility to the different levels. So one thing with our retail locations that's quite unique to this industry is that our store leadership teams at a different region, at a district, at an area, all need to be able to get real-time visibility into the regions that they manage. And so this helps us drive efficiencies and compliance and gives our store leadership all the information they need to move about their workday efficiently. And finally, our central HQ teams have often been involved in our ServiceNow solutions. Um, so this is not gonna be a new persona per se, but for central HQ, what they need is the ability to serve both customers and the store. So when a question comes in from that store associate, from that store leader, Central HQ needs to understand the context that they're working in, whether there are common problems, um, what type of specific equipment is at that store. And so empowering our Central HQ teams with all the information they need and tied into this retail hierarchy is going to serve all of these personas together and deliver a faster experience that allows them to get back to serving customers um, more quickly. So those are our personas that we often see in retail service management and retail operations. Now, let me talk a little bit about, again, those capabilities. So we have store operations, um, which we can categorize as those dedicated store experiences. Um, so with retail service management and retail operations, we provide the business location support portal. Um, and this is for store teams to have one place to go in order to track all of their requests and their resources. We also have business location 360, which sits on the HQ side, what you're seeing in the screenshot behind, which is an out of the box dashboard um, that gives visibility into specific location details. Alongside these, um, there will be some you know, ServiceNow greatest hits capabilities, things like service catalog, playbooks, virtual agent, and knowledge management that come together and can be surfaced through 
our business location support portal so that people can get all of that great information in one place and enhance the self-service experience. Now, a big part of store operations and what we release specifically in the Xanadu release is starting with the retail data model. So the retail data model is a foundational data model that gives us information about each location. Um, so this gives us attributes that are unique to retail, and it also has that built-in hierarchy leveling um, that I was talking about earlier. So with our dedicated data model, our future experiences are going to be able to draw off of these attributes that are unique to this model um, and also simplifies the admin experience by including some of those attributes during configuration. So right now, what we're doing with this model is really laying the groundwork for the future of a uh, retail product. And with the data model, we're also shipping the retail base case. And so the base case is a way to have those retail specific cases um, focusing on the needs of the store and assigning things to the store rather than on consumers or accounts, et cetera. Um, but this forms, again, that backbone for the different kinds of work that we'll be able to ship in future releases um, for retail scenarios, um, including but not limited to things like a product recall or a store inspection. So retail-based case, again, came out in the Xanadu Q3 store release. Um, alongside retail data model. And these two are our first capabilities specific to the retail industry, building upon all of the different other tools that exist for our customer and store service teams um, to deliver that you know, unified experience. Now, turning my attention more towards the retail service management side, um, what we have here is and of these, these customer engagement and agent experiences that are still very critical to our retail customers. So for example, we have all these different channels um, that power customer engagement, and they can also take advantage of things like knowledge management and communities um, to share information. Now, alongside customer engagement, you know, we also need to make sure agents have all the information that they need to serve. Um, and so with agents, um, they have information about the customer as well as the store. And there are a lot of other tools that can be used, including um, now Assistable, which I'll talk about shortly to enhance that agent experience. And one thing to mention here is that retail data model does cut across both the store teams and um, the agents. So that is a shared part of this as well. And finally, we have customer operations. So in the background, how do we make this process seamless across these different stakeholders, whether it's front, middle, or back office? Um, we have a lot of tools within ServiceNow that help enhance um, these processes, whether it's making it clear for the person who's going through them or going through some process mining, um, optimization to improve what's already there. And as I mentioned, Now Assist is a part of our solution for our HQ users. So being able to deliver um, important information such as summaries, um, help the agent really move quickly throughout their process. Uh, these are all tools that can be applied to streamline not only the agent experience, but also the end customers um, who is reaching out for self-service. All right. So to wrap up our capabilities and our general description of the product before I hand it over to Rahul for the live demo, these are a few of the common use cases that we see for retail operations and retail service management. So moving from left to right, we have in-store customer service, right? What happens when someone needs help in the store? By connecting our store teams to HQ, we have that clear line of communication that can involve our customer with retail ops and RSM. Now, store task management, this is a big one, and there are different levels of task management, right? We can have HQ assigning work to the store. We could have store manager assigning work to their teams. We have a lot of different capabilities within ServiceNow to handle store task management. But the key here is really bringing in the stores in the first place through retail ops and HQ through RSM to have that clear um, process channel, for lack of a better word. Break fix requests. 
Um, so this is when something is broken in the store, how do you get help quickly for it? Well, with retail ops, we have self-service tools for people in the store to reach out, whether that's through uh, opening a case themselves or chatting with the virtual agent to streamline that process, or even just seeing that someone else has already filed a case and not having to duplicate it. That is a key part of streamlining the experience. And that comes with having the store modeled in retail operations so all the store teams can share that visibility. And finally, a very classic use case, customer complaints. You can handle this just with retail service management. Um, if most of your use cases will be around the customer reaching out to HQ for help. Um, and again, this draws on our customer service capabilities that we've been handling for a long time. Now, before we move on to the live demo, just wanna give one moment here for you to tell us. So here we'll use the chat. Um, what is your top retail use case? We'd love to understand a little bit. Does that align with some of the previous ones for break fix, for store task management? Let us know. Um, we're all ears. And we'll just see um, if there's any particular ones that stand out. All right. I know top retail use cases that I have seen include things like break fix. Okay, yes, store task management, a very big one. Um, that can be multiple levels of, you know, if it's an ad hoc task um, or maybe something that's more structured. So we've heard things like visual merchandising, um, asset management. Okay, yeah, being able to see all the information, store team collaboration. Yeah, being able to you know, figure out who's gonna work on what, um, and especially with different shifts, um, that can be hard to manage sometimes. Okay, yes, customer service support, break fix, visual merchandising, all great use cases for retail service management and retail operations and knowledge management being a great use case as well. Awesome. Well, if you still have any more use cases you wanna share with us, please feel free to do so in the chat. But for now, I'm going to hand it over to Rahul for the live demo. Thank you so much, Anita, for walking everybody through all the capabilities in detail. And thank you everyone for sharing your use cases in the chat. Uh, in the next section of this webinar, we are going to see how some of these capabilities work. So essentially, we're going to divide the demo into a few scenarios that we'll cover today. The first scenario is setting up a new retail organization. So essentially, we'll see how you can create a new retail organization and the hierarchy of the organization, along with adding store members and assigning roles. In the second scenario, we're going to talk about digitizing store to HQ support. Essentially, we'll see how a store can request help from their headquarters. And in the third scenario, we are going to see how you can streamline in-store operations, essentially how you can gain visibility within the stores and digitize all the in-store cases. So for this demo, I'm going to take a hypothetical organization called Global Mart, that is a grocery store in North America. They serve across various regions in North America, but for the purpose of our demos, let's see Global Mart South and Global Mart North as two different regions. And within these, within this organization, there are both company-owned and franchise organizations. So after Global Mart South and Global Mart North, you see Global Mart Southeast, which is an area under Global Mart South. And then within Global Mart Southeast, there are various stores like Atlanta Mart, Miami Mart, and other stores. So today we are also going to see how we can create a new store. So for the first scenario, I'm going to take help of an administrator who is going to go in the platform and create a new retail organization, register staffs, and also track products and services. So I'm currently logged in as an admin and I am in ServiceNow platform. Then I go to retail organizations and click on all organizations. So 
So here you'll see a list of all the retail organizations that are part of Global Mart. You'll see various hierarchies and various stores uh, all listed down here. We'll walk through them one by one. So let's open Global Mart South, which is one of the regions for Global Mart as an organization. So once you open this, you'll see that this is a company owned region and you'll see various other fields, which I'll explain just in a minute. And Patricia Nelson is the manager or the regional manager who looks after all the stores on all the areas under Global Mart South. So below this, you'll see various uh, related lists. So essentially, uh, you'll see that Global Mart Southeast is added as a child of Global Mart South. So let's open Global Mart Southeast. So here you'll observe that for Global Mart Southeast, the parent service organization is Global Mart South. So that's how we define hierarchies within our data model. And then as a child of Global Mart Southeast, you'll see various retail stores listed here, like Atlanta Mart, Orlando Mart, and Miami Mart. Let's go ahead and create a new retail org. So let's say we want to create a new retail org uh, that is Alabama. Now, what you can do is you see various options here. One, the type. So essentially we have business location and business groups. So the way we differentiate between a business location and a business group is a business location is a physical location like your retail store versus a business group that could be, let's say your area office or your regional office. So when we talked about Global Mart South, that was modeled as a business group. And similarly, if uh, I want to model Global Mart Southeast, that will again be modeled as business group and I'll select area division district accordingly. But for this, we're creating a retail store. So we'll select business location and select store as an option. Next, what we'll do is we'll just create this retail org. So once we create Alabama, <clears throat> now what we can do is we can go ahead and add members to this organization. So we are creating an, uh, members for Alabama. What we can do is we can create a new member or we can also move existing members from other retail stores to the new store. So let us create a new user, let's say Don Jason. And now you'll see that there is something called as member type. So this is how we assign roles and responsibilities for a given member. We can share a detailed documentation on how this works, but essentially a security model defines what kind of roles you want to assign to a store member and what cases would be visible for them. So for example, in this scenario, we want John Jason to be the store manager. So essentially, he will be able to create cases and he will be able to fulfill cases at this store. So you can see that we have added John Jason as a user for this particular store. What we can also do is we can also add install base items. So let's say I want to add a point of sale system. So I can just create uh, install base item. And now what I can do is at the store, I can create cases against these install base items. So at a retail store, you will have various, um, you know, install base items such as point of sale. Uh, you'll have refrigerators, you'll have HVAC systems. So you can add all those install base items here. And it at the store, if something breaks down, you can create a case, a case against them. So let me go back and show you how a full-fledged uh, retail org, retail store looks like. So again, we are back to Global Mart Southeast. And here you can see, let's open Miami Mart. 
So you can see that we have added all the details for Miami Mart, where we know it's a company owned store, which is a part of Global Mart Southeast. We have modeled it as a business location and a store. And Frank Chapman is the manager for this particular store. You can add various members like store associates. You can add uh, members, additional uh, store managers, supervisors. All of those can be modeled as members of the store. And then you can also track what are the cases that have been assigned to the store. And you can also track you know, install base items for this particular store. So I'll just quickly go back to the slide. So in this slide, in this demo, we saw that how system administrator was able to register a retail organization, create add new members, uh, and also track products and services. So this was the first part of our demo. Let's move on to the second scenario of the demo. So this is where we talk about digitizing store to HQ support. So essentially, you can think of use cases like, hey, I am at the store and something has broken down. We just spoke about POS machine, right? So in this example, in this demo, we are going to talk about POS machine not working and how our store manager is able to report the case and how the central HQ is able to help Frank resolve this case. So let's go back to our screen and let's look at Frank, who's a store manager for Miami Mart, and let's see how he reports an issue for the POS machine not working. I'm going to go to Frank Chapman. So what you see here is our portal interface. So this is a standard interface that can be used by any retail organization or retail stores. So essentially, this is where they can easily track all the ongoing cases. They can report for new cases. They can also look at you know different business locations that they're part of. So here, what we see is that uh, Frank here is a part of Miami Mart. He's the manager of Miami Mart. Additionally, on the portals, he can request for different services. So where Anita was talking about having different catalog items for different kinds of services that can be customized as per the customer requirements on the portals. And then those cat within using those catalog items, they can create a case. We'll just get to that in a minute. Additionally, you can also configure knowledge base articles. You can have your virtual agent all of those can be configured here on the portals that can be super useful for any of your retail personas. So coming back to our use case where Frank wants to report an issue with his POS machine not working, let's go to the support section. And this is where you find one of the catalog items, which is report a retail case. Let's open this up. This form that you see here can be completely customized as per the requirements and as per the SOPs of different organizations. So here, let's say he is requesting a case for Miami Mart. Let's say it's a high priority issue and he mentions that the POS machine is not working. And this is for the install base item called point of sale system. And let's just submit the case. Now you'll see that the case has been created. And within this, if there's any additional comments that Frank wants to add, he can add that as well in the activity section. Now I want to take a moment to get back to our scenario and introduce you with another persona that is Dennis Morgan, who's the area manager for Southeast Global Mart. So let's go ahead and see how his experience looks like. So again, you'll notice that I am in the portal itself. And the difference that you'll see here is for Dennis, who's the area manager for Southeast, he's able to see all the stores under him. So this essentially gives a clear visibility to Dennis if he wants to look at what is happening at different stores, what kind of cases are being reported. So for example, we can get into Miami Mart he can look at all the cases that have been created. So for example, Frank just created a case for POS machine not working. So he's easily able to see that. And if he wants, he can open the case and he can also escalate this case. So for example, he can leave a comment that please escalate this case. And add a note. 
So essentially, this gives Dennis, our persona, which is area manager, a complete visibility into what are the different cases that are reported under any of his stores. Now let's get back to our demo scenario. Now that the case has been created, let us go at look at our, another persona, which is Angelia Thomas, who's the store support agent sitting in the central HQ. So here you'll see that I am in the workspace experience where all our central HQ support agents are able to look at the cases and fulfill these. So, so here you will notice that this is the recent case that Frank just created. So Angelia is able to look at the case. She's also able to see the messages from the area manager and any other additional notes that have been added from the store. And she's also able to see the business location. So this is a 360 view of uh, the entire business location, wherein Angelia can clearly see that there is a product installed, which is point of sale system. And there is an open issue that has been reported by Fran Chapman. And this is a P1 case. Now what Angelia can do is she can look into all the historical cases. She can look at the knowledge and then she can see if the case uh, can be resolved by her or would she need to send a field agent to the store. So we have an out of the box capability or a new product called field service management and wherein you can easily create work orders and then seamlessly send field agents to the stores. So let's say if uh, Angelia is not able to resolve the case on herself, she can just simply create a work order and then uh, uh, agent will be dispatched to the store for the resolution. So this is how we saw that how a store can request help from the HQ. And we also saw how different hierarchies, managers within different hierarchies can have a complete view of what is happening in different stores and then how central HQ can help resolve the case. So this is our second scenario. Now let's move on to the third and the final scenario. So in this scenario, we are going to talk about how you can streamline in-store operations. So essentially we see a lot of use cases where in the store on a day-to-day -day basis, there are a lot of small issues that keep happening. For example, there is a spillage on a certain aisle in a store, or there's a light bulb that's not working in the back office. We want to help retail organizations digitize their processes so that they're able to streamline the operations and they're able to make maximum use of their resources. So for this example, we are going to take a use case wherein a light bulb in the back room is not working. So Frank, who's again the store manager for Miami Mart, he's able to report this issue. And then we have this new persona, which is Angela Powell, who's the store associate. She's able to pick up that case and resolve it quickly. So let's go back to Frank and see how he reports the issue. So again, Frank goes back to the portal. He goes back to the catalog items. He's able to see a catalog item which says report an issue at the store. He's able to open this issue and just create an issue. Let's say light bulb uh, is not working in the back of this. And he simply creates this issue. Now this issue has been created. Now let's go to Angela's experience. So again, Angela is a store associate. She is also sitting in a portal experience. So what she's able to do is because of our security model, she's able to see all the cases and tasks that have been reported for her store only. So she won't be able to see any other cases or tasks that have been created for any other store but she'll be only able to see the uh, issues in her store. So right here, she says that light bulb is not working in the office. What she can do is she can quickly pick this up. She can go and replace the bulb and just close the case. So for example, she can say that light bulb has been replaced and 
accept this comment and then simply close the case. So this is how you can digitize your in-store operations as well. To this, you can also customize, you can add multiple tasks for a particular case so that if you have a multi-step process where you want your store associates or your store managers to do multiple steps to streamline the operations, you can do that as well. And then if you go back to our persona that was Frank, so Frank can now, after creating a case, he can quickly see that the case has been resolved and he's able to track that quickly. He goes here, he's able to see that it is closed and it, and Angela has updated the comment as well. So just to recap on all the demo scenarios, we first learned about how we can set up a new retail organization, essentially creating a hierarchy of organization, adding store members, assigning role that gives out of the box security for you to uh, easily understand what needs to be visible to what persona. Then we spoke about digitizing store to HQ support, wherein you can request help from your store to your HQ. And lastly, we looked at how you can streamline in-store operations as well. So I hope this demo was useful and we are going to come up with new capabilities and we are going to talk about it in the future sessions.